36 games played, 32 wins, 4 draws, 1 final game to go. Win it and we'll be the partisan invincibles. Lose it and we are a failure. Hello and welcome back to Around the Block and the final episode of this season with part of the first full season that we've had. Obviously, last episode was a little bit disappointing getting knocked out to uh, Atletico Madrid over two legs. A lot of you said I messed it up a little bit, uh, should have gone more defensive at home and, and attacking away from home. I mean, I wouldn't have changed it, if I'm honest with you. Maybe I got it a little bit wrong, but I wouldn't have changed how I did things. And I think Atletico Madrid were just the better side. We've got two games to go this season. We've got the final game of the season against Rad and then the Serbian Cup final to have another double in a row. That'd be fantastic. But in between episodes, we actually drew another game against Makva 1-1. Uh, Thaddeus Agala getting the goal in that one before Norman Neyer, of all people, picked up a brace against Vosvodak to ensure a 2-0 victory in our penultimate game of the season. So as you can see, 32 games won four Four games drawn, zero games lost. Win this one or draw this one, then we will be the partisan invincibles. And I think that's the first time it's happened um, across this database, essentially. I'm looking past the, through the previous years and it's not happened. Four losses are the best that Red Star have had. Partisan have never had a... Uh, an, an invincible season but we might be able to do it right now one more win one more draw we'll get to 103 points or 101 points and that'd be absolutely magnificent amazingly 100 points isn't actually the league record we had quite a few news articles come through telling us about uh, records if i just search record uh, it should come up so set for a record points or the current record is actually 101 points so that's pretty exciting so we could beat that with a win to get, go to 103 points uh, we've had 32 wins this season the record is already 32 wins that must be a long time ago but uh, another win today 33 wins we get the record there and Alimi has got 30 clean sheets this season the current record is 30 so one more clean sheet for him we'll also get a record there so hopefully a win to get the points, the number of wins, and a clean sheet to get that. All those records will be fantastic. So this is the team that I think should be able to do it going into the final game of the season. Alimi in goal as usual. Harish Buncevic is back from injury and back in the starting lineup alongside Hammerberger, Hendrik and Junior because Stefan is currently injured uh, and needs a bit of a rest and things like that. Uh, Filip Sivimic and Isakovic in the middle with Jez Jezevic, uh, Nikolic and Milo across the attacking midfield. And Thaddeus Agalo starts up front. He's got 41 goals this season in all competitions, Thaddeus. What a play he's going to be. I think we're going to struggle to keep hold of him over summer. Uh, but as you can see, 26 goals in 32 league appearances, 41 goals in 48 appearances overall. What a player. I think he's going to go on to big and better things in the future. So then, kickoff is upon us. Rad, I don't think are like a great team. We're, I mean, obviously, in the top half of the table, that's why we're playing against them because we're in the, obviously the second half of the season where the top half of the table is in its own sort of separate league. So they are a top half team, but hopefully they're not good enough to score passes today because I quite want to get the clean sheet record. I quite want the points record. I quite want the win record as well as Milo. Go on, lad. Score an opening goal. He's hit the far post. That's agonizingly close, but uh, a good start from us nonetheless. Obviously, Rad going for quite a defensive formation today. I'm not quite sure why because they've got nothing to play for right now by looks of things. Uh, they are currently seventh in the table. They can't get European football. They can't go down. So, I don't really know what we're doing. If just, just just let us win. Don't score. Let us win. You know, let us have the records, please. That's what we want. As Milo can't quite get on the end of the cross, but Junior puts it in the back of the net for his first goal of the season. Snanny Junior, the youngster we brought in in January to slowly replace Stefan at some point. He'll get better and better as the years go on, but uh, I think we'll probably have moved on by the time he's actually very good at good enough to actually be the, be the first team player uh, a lot of you as well last time uh, seem to agree that maybe looking to move on is that is the right idea given that we've won the league twice with partisan and won the cup once maybe twice with today's episode as well uh, in one season and eight games that like we've not been here very long and won so many trophies it's like there's not really much more we can do here to be honest now i'm not just going to leave partisan uh, i'll stay at partisan until i actually get offered a job elsewhere but i will be applying for other stuff so i've got to wait for things to come up essentially so we'll probably end up starting next season with partisan if we get to the champions league if we qualify for the champions league that might change things a little bit but as like if we get knocked out of the champions league in the group stages that's maybe when i look to properly move on because if we can get some good champions league football that'd be quite a good little step for us but 
ideally we want to be moving to a team that's already qualified for the Champions League as well ideally straight to the group stages but we do have a throw in right now just for half time can we make it 2-0 oh, not quite but a good first half here 15 shots to zero very pleased with it oh well that wasn't great uh, I didn't expect that to happen not getting the clean sheet record then for Alimi he's uh, he's equaling it but he's not going to be getting that anytime soon. Um, oh, man. See, the thing is, 30 clean sheets in a season is a lot, especially when you consider that we've played 37 games this season in the league. Uh, I don't think he's going to be uh, doing that again anytime soon. If we have another season like this next year, like that is just mental, but I can't see us having another season like this because they are just like so, so rare, aren't they? But 1-1 one, one at half time. rather frustrating that's their one shot on target as well. <sighs> You hate to see it. We do have a chance right at the start of the second half, though, when Junior gets his second goal, a glimmer of the future here, as he's picked up two goals today, both of them very, very good goals. And instantly, right at the start of the second half, we are back in front. So at least we'll pick up, hopefully, as it stands right now, the win record and the uh, point record. That's what I was looking for. And, of course, the Invincible season. I'm not sure if I'll get the Steam achievement for Invincible season. I feel like to get the Steam achievement for it, you have to go... Cup Invincible and Continental Invincible and Friendly Invincible as well. And we've not obviously not been invincible in friendlies or in uh, in European competitions. But we have been through a cup, obviously, so far in the league. So I don't know if I'm going to get the achievement or not, but I'd like to because that's a very rare achievement to get, I feel. As uh, Nikolic with a free kick in the middle and it's oh, just over the bar. Unlucky there. 20 minutes to go, though. I think we can be pretty confident we're going to win this game. Harish Buncevic should probably come off to have a little bit of a rest before the Cup final as well. Uh, Mayer scored two goals last game, so we'll bring him on for a Simovic, who's not played particularly well. Uh, so there are two changes that we'll make right now. Lukovic actually can come for Jedjevic too. There we go. All the changes made uh, with 15 or so minutes to go. Someone has very kindly just started up a chainsaw outside and is cutting something down. If you can hear it on the microphone, uh, I do apologise, but I... I mean, I've not really got much time to record this before it goes out tonight. So uh, you might have to deal with it with a slight in the background. But we've won that game 2-1. 103 points we've finished the league on. And of course, the invincible season as well for us. That is absolutely mental. I've never, ever, ever done an invincible league season before. But that's, the, that's literally the first time ever. I'm actually really proud of that. Very proud of that, to be fair. Uh, this partisan side are far too good, as uh, Junior gets a great rating there for his two goals and stuff. I've not got any achievement, though, which I'm quite upset about, so maybe you have to have the entire season invincible, every single competition that you're in. But I'll tell you what, I'm happy with that. So there we go, a record number of wins for Partizan with 33. That doesn't say a league record, that says Partizan record. So that does suggest, and it also says here, record high points total for Partizan. That's our highest points total. So that does suggest, actually... That there are bigger records held by, I assume, Red Star? Ah, yes. As it says here, Red Star did get 105 points in a season in 1999-2000. That's absolutely mental. Obviously, they had one more win than us, one less draw. That's how they've got that. But that is crazy. And obviously, that same season, they got the 33 wins uh, rather than our 32. That is ridiculous. Now, we got 33 wins, didn't we? Hang on a second. We're on 33 wins, 103 points. I guess they must have had an extra game in there. They must have had like 38 games that season. Can we see this? If we go to history, uh, look at uh, competitions, domestic leagues, 1999 to 2000. They played 40 games that season. Ah, so they played three more games than us and they got two extra points. So actually, I feel that's a little bit unfair. I feel on points per game, we must have the record, definitely. Victoria Pleasant manager, though, is very insecure right now. Oh, I hope he gets sacked before the end of the season. Have they got any more games to go? They've got one more game. If they lose that game, I reckon we've got a, he's got a good chance of that guy being sacked. But we need to keep a big eye out on this job. This is a job that I quite fancy. Saying that, though, a return to Russia, maybe. A return to Russia with a Zenit who finished fourth this season in the Russian Premier League. How has this one gone off then? Spartak, Dinamo, Krasnodar, Zenit, uh, CSK, Lokomotiv. Whoa. Zenit's not a bad shout. I don't think I'll get that job, if I'm honest with you. But I'm going to apply for that. Yes. And also this Viterol job. Oops, if we're on the wrong thing. 
They're not a bad side either to go to. Vitarol. Schedule. Where are they? They're fourth in the Romanian Championship Division. Ah, so the, but they've only got Europa Conference League football. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. Because that's something where we, we, could, we could win. You could argue it's maybe a little bit of a step backwards from Partizan. But... Obviously, they are miles behind a stay of Bucharest to Cluj, a Bucharesti by looks of things, in terms of points. So I think I might apply for this job as well. You know what? Let's go for it. And what is interesting, I've just clicked on the Zenit job. Leading candidate is the Victoria Pleasant manager. So there's a bit of a chain of events happening here that could work out nicely in our favour. There's also that nice narrative of us going back to another Moscow club. But Lokomotiv Moscow, not the best facilities. They're okay financially, not valued very much. I think we're better off Zenit Partizan than going to Lokomotiv Moscow. Whereas Zenit are rich. Uh, and I think Vitarol are also rich and valued at a lot of money as well. So that's a very good club to go to. So Zenit have received that job application. Uh, and we are linked with them according to the leaks, which is interesting. Uh, can I comment on the rumours? I wouldn't rule anything out at this stage, I'll say. Just to tentatively say that. And of course, Vitarol have also... Uh, accepted that or not accepted they've, they've received the application as well so hopefully in today's episode we'll hear something Tottenham are chasing Thaddeus Agarlo uh, discussing a deal worth 6.25 million pounds now you will be happy to know there was a minimum fee release clause in his contract uh, contract info we got rid of that in his new contract that happened not long ago so we can push that price up quite a bit. Apparently, he's tipped with a new Didier Drogba, which is pretty interesting. Partisan board want me to stay, but obviously we want to go. Oh, if these jobs come up, that'd be decent. And I know maybe going back to Russia is maybe something you guys maybe don't want to see. But a season with Zenit, potentially winning the league there in a, in a club that is you know able to win that Russian Premier League, boosts my reputation massively. It really puts a middle finger up to CSK Moscow for sacking me. And then we can move on after that. Or we'll do like a Champions League with Zenit, but then move back to like a like a smaller club. Because I do want to try and visit as many countries as possible. Um, there's a long way to go until FM21. So there's loads of different possibilities we can go to. We could win a Champions League with Zenit. That might not be the end of the series. It probably won't be. We'll probably go somewhere else and just see a bit more of Eastern Europe and things like that. Because uh, the whole point of this, for me as well, is to just explore other leagues that I don't normally get to go to. So because we win a Champions League or something, doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be the end. There's all sorts of things that could be happening across this save. Like we could win a Champions League next season with Partizan, for example. I'm not going to finish the, the series then because I want to go and explore other places as well. I think you guys do too. I think you quite enjoy that. In other news though, Zenit St. Petersburg fans consider me to be the leading candidate to take the job there, which is very exciting. We've got a World Cup coming up. This Everything is kicking off right now. Everything is kicking off. Seven players are going to the World Cup with Ser well, six with Serbia and Thaddeus is going with the Ivory Coast. That's exciting. For this cup final game, let's not get too distracted. Uh, we're going to bring Stefan back on the pitch despite Junior being brilliant last game. Stefan, I think, deserves to play this final. Uh, other than that, I don't want to change the lineup because that is the strongest lineup available to us. Nikolic can't play because he's ineligible because it's his parent club, Vojvodina, so we'll just swap him over with Zukic. But there we go. That is the lineup. Let's go and win this and see what unfolds. So, kickoff is upon us here, and I'm pretty excited for this one. If we can do another double, that really, really helps us with our job applications because other clubs like it when you win things. I think the reason the reason we got so lucky with getting that uh, job at um, CSK Moscow straight from Pushkas Academy is because uh, we won the league title with them and we weren't quite... I think we're like second... Favourites have become second or third. So we're going to be up there or thereabouts, but we won it, weren't quite expected to win it. I think that really helped us out massively with that CSK Moscow job because we're overachieving a little bit in their eyes. So I think that's why they liked us so much. And I think that's probably why the Zenit St. Petersburg fans rate me as the favourite man to get the job because we're doing so well here with Partizan like three trophies so far we could make it four today as well and that would even help even more as Nikolic gets it into Asimovic Asimovic to Isakovic Isakovic into Milo Milo coming forward Milo shoots scores 1-0 to us and we're on our way to the second piece of silverware this season Vojvodina at the moment have no answer they've had no shots at all and Milo makes it 2-0 inside of 20 minutes this 
It's this guy just walking down the street with a chainsaw because he's getting closer and closer, I swear. It must be a direct neighbour because I'm looking out my window and I can't see, like, in my periphery what's going on. So it must be, like, either side of the house or something like that, but it's really loud all of a sudden. So I do apologise if this is coming through the microphone to you because, um, I mean, it's not it's not the nicer thing to listen to, is it, with me talking in the background. You can just hear a rrrr, which isn't obviously very entertaining for you or, or very good production value from me either. Speaking of production value, uh, the stream production value has taken a massive step up, I think, I hope at least. You guys can be the judge of that tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. UK time. Big changes coming to how the stream looks. Uh, it's a goal for Thaddeus Sigala, but he's miles offside there, so we won't worry about that too much. But yeah, tomorrow um, we are starting a season four with Arsenal, which is very exciting. We've got the transfer window to do, so I need your help with that. Um, so come along tomorrow to the stream over on twitch.tv slash tomfm. Link down in the description. It all looks completely different. There's a whole new sort of theme and vibe to it. Um, so hopefully you guys will like it. If you don't like it, then that's uh, not so good for me because I then wasted 20 quid on buying things for the stream. But if you do like it, that's that's good. Milo coming forward with into Thaddeus Agarlo. Gets his 42nd goal of the season there. And I think by looks of things, we've won another cup title with Partizan. So at halftime, 3-0 up against Voivodina. I don't think I've ever had... Well, I have had more successful seasons in the terms that I've won, like a Premier League, a Champions League, and like an FA Cup in a season. But I've never had something so successful where like, we haven't lost a league game. We've obviously not lost a cup game either because we are, we've got a through self through to the final. We're about to win it as we've just had another penalty given to... Another penalty, a penalty given to us, which Milo has scored. You love to see it. This has been... Yeah, one of the most successful seasons I've ever had on Football Manager. And we're so close to a Europa League final. Imagine if we'd won that as well. That really would have been the icing on the cake, which would have been fantastic. But uh, just unfortunate, we just weren't quite strong enough to do that. But I think if we got the Zenit job, for example, I think we would be able to win a Europa League and get pretty far in the Champions League as well. Do a lot of damage in that. Um, should we get that? I think we should do if we've got if we go to Zenit. I think they came fourth, didn't they? Which should be a Champions League place, I believe. So that'd be quite exciting. Uh, this Vitarol Club, if we go there instead, uh, I think we could give everyone a decent run for their money in the Europa Conference League. And then obviously after that, probably sort of similar results as Partizan potentially in, in other competitions. But I have to sort of wait and see with that. I think I'd be more interested in the Vitarol job for now, just because it's a new country. It's Romania. We've not been there before. But if Zenit come knocking on the door, one of the best clubs in this, you know, Eastern European save, having another crack at Russia as well to win the league title there, because obviously we just missed out with uh, with CSK Moscow to Zenit St. Petersburg. Um, I think it'd be a great opportunity to win a European competition as well. And we don't have to stay there very long either. Like we, we can move along pretty quickly after we've sort of dominated Russia a little bit. And then we can sort of move on and maybe forget about Russia a little bit, um, focus on the pinnacle being maybe a, an Eastern German club like a Leipzig that has got the capabilities to maybe win a Champions League in there or something like that. Oh, there's so much to think about, so much to really think about and uh, decide upon. And it feels it feels a little bit rushed almost, right? It, like, it, I didn't expect it to happen in today's episode. I didn't expect to see those jobs available, but I have done. And now it all feels a little bit rushed almost. And I kind of want to just sit down and you guys tell me which way to go. And I think I'll leave it up to you maybe in the comment section but we'll have to see what happens maybe with if we get job interviews and stuff like that. I might put a poll out on Twitter, but I don't want it to be... It's not really a spoiler, is it? I suppose. It's not really a spoiler because we're not been offered the jobs yet. We might not be offered the jobs. I can just put these jobs are available. Which one do you want to go to on Twitter? I might do that on Twitter, actually. So link down in the description uh, at TomFM underscore YT. Uh, rather annoying, the underscore YT has to be there. Uh, there's some Spanish kid called Tom FM and he, he, I tweet him every now and again saying can he give him the name but he never does so until he like changes his Twitter name as Isakovic makes it 5-0 we're stuck with Tom FM underscore YT which just looks a little bit stupid really oh you can tell that I'm very conflicted about lots of things in my head right now and I'm not quite sure what to do and I'm just trying to talk about it to try and make sense of it in my head of, as to where we want to go how I'm going to get this 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 Twitter at off this Spanish kid it's oh, it's just it's always it's so frustrating. I just need to sit down, think long and hard about it, listen to what you guys have to say, 
and we'll all work it out in the end probably i assume as oh we've just hit the post but that being said we have just won the serbian cup i forgot to change the three deep so we don't get to see us lifting the title but we've seen it so many times before it doesn't matter too much five nil in the final against voivodina another trophy to add to our name and at this rate i must be like an icon at the club surely by now as we've done the double lift the serbian cup all the players been given medals another win for us and for me uh, i've pleased the board massively although saying that's all right we've just won the cup we can't do better than that but their performance they think i've only performed 60 percent well it doesn't make sense milo with a hat trick in the final what a fantastic game for him as well as one assist and that could be the final time we see partisan in an episode or at least we, we manage partisan in an episode so my profile uh, is looking pretty nice now all of these wins and things like that which you love to see uh, up to three and a half stars of reputation as well that's not really shifted too much i've got to say uh 70 it says there it sort of goes up between 65 and 70 percent we've not improved it much after that i think a bit of champions league football might help out a little bit with that maybe uh but looking at my like manager attributes i'm pretty decent as a manager now i must say can still do a continental pro license course as well we might ask partisan to do that for us now it's the end of the season they rejected us from doing that last season but i think what we might have to do is just go to uh where is it coaches edit coach assignments ask assistant to sort it all out everyone is average or light so and if we get rid of ones on me so you you do technical and you do that as well he's a guy he's a fitness coach he doesn't want to do that uh or all these guys not oh okay you do that then average light i'm only doing a little bit in fact if i get rid of me on there put that down there excellent i'm not doing any coaching now so surely they just can't say no to me and now potentially the final thing that partisan do for us is give me a continental pro license can i have it lads and they have said yes they're going to fund that for me so in a year's time i'll get my continental pro license and we'll be done with all of these coaching badges chitty joe by the way currently on his continental c license and i believe uh i believe he's currently studying for his continental b license as well so he'll obviously come along with us to wherever we go next so now what i think we'll do is just sort of go forward a few days see if we get given these job the victoria pleasant job is available as well so that's a job to apply for apply for that yes please and now we just sort of sit on oh, leipzig's also available i tell you what let's apply for leipzig too because that job doesn't come around very often so pleasant leipzig vitrol zenit i would say vitrol and pleasant the most likely then zenit and then leipzig i don't think we'll get the leipzig job this roger smith guy is a very good manager by looks of things currently at augsburg uh, and rb leipzig themselves are four star reputation i'm three and a half so i might get it i might get it but it'll be a tough going particularly because they finish 11th this season in the bundesliga so no european football for us but until then a 7th 11th 10th oh they're not actually that good i thought this look at that graph it makes it look like that's behind my head isn't it looking at that graph it looks like they might be like a, a top four team but actually they're like mid-table finishes so maybe they're not quite as good as we thought but they are still the best team in germany who were part of east germany back in the old um soviet republic whatever it was called ussr with knowledge like that you would not know that i've actually got a history degree would you you would not have a clue atletico madrid went on to beat Hertha berlin in the final fair play to them as uh, we are apparently the biggest overachievers in that competition which is maybe a little bit fair jez jezevich though was actually the runner-up in player of the tournament though which is pretty cool for him as uh Thaddeus Igalo comes third in top goal scorer for the europa league as well which is pretty cool he also wins top goal scorer, obviously, in the Serbian Super League. Uh, the best rookie, even though he's had a few seasons at Partizan already, so that doesn't quite make sense, really. Uh, and, of course, manager of the year, me. You love to see it. But it's been a little while now, and uh, we've not heard anything from any of the jobs we've applied for. Now, I guess they're obviously taking their time, because there's no rush right now. It's the, it's the summer, isn't it? But you'd imagine they'd want to get the new managers in before the transfer window opens. So I assume I must, we must hear back from them soon, surely. Still says applied on all of these things, so I don't think I've actually been, like... It still says applied on all of these, so none of them have rejected me yet as far as I'm aware. I don't think that's happened, so I've just got to 
Sit tight and wait. Ah, okay. The first one of the hopeful job interviews have come through. FC Viteral have come big and said, let's have an interview with you. They've not I've not been rejected anywhere, have I? Reject? No, no rejections in there. So we'll do this interview with Viteral. And I'm going to assume that any other interviews after this are going to be very, very similar. So I think we'll just do this one on camera. If the other jobs come up, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit as well. Uh, the board are pleased that you have taken the time to attend today. Thank you very much for, for letting me have a chat with you. Uh, language that always comes up, so it's easy to learn a language. We always say that and it always works quite nicely. And I do learn languages very quickly on game because it says that I'm fluent in like five languages now, which is pretty decent. Um, you've never managed in this country before. Why is that not an issue to you? Now, what do we say here? I think normally we go for, I've been keen to manage in this country, but until now I've never had the opportunity uh, that seems like quite a promising one. I think we'll say that to the the nice looking owner. He's a very nice looking owner, this guy. He looks very happy. It's a good photo. It makes you feel comfortable as opposed to like the, the who was, who was, what was he called at uh, CSK Moscow? Always put me off. I can't remember his name, but he always put me off. And as well as Maxime Pugach as well at uh, at uh, Martin, I think it was. There was that, I can't remember Mike, Maxime Pugach was that now, but he always made me uncomfortable as well. Why we felt acceptable to apply for a number of jobs? Well, it's acceptable when it comes to how long I've been in management for. Can you explain why you appear to be in the running for a few jobs right now? Uh, I'm merely considering my options. That's what we'll say. Um, and again, they always got about my media handler being me mediocre. It's non-existent, not mediocre, but uh, I can improve. Let me have the opportunity to prove it to you. We always say that. And again, media controversy. We, that's not happened for like years, but I've got to say it every time I can improve, improve the atmosphere, blah, 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 blah. Can I take the club to the next level? Um, let's have a quick look. Um, I believe I've got a reputation that sufficiently answers that question, as I did this season by taking Partizan through to the semi-finals of the Europa League. Um, when you want to take charge of a job, I want to take charge at the end of the season. Isn't that the end of the season now? I can do it immediately. I'll do it immediately. because That doesn't make any difference to me. Do you want to make any changes to the staff? Yes, I'd like to bring Shitty Jill in. So a small budget to allow me to make some modifications would be very nice. This is the current... Oh, they're asking a lot, aren't they? Possessional, attacking, high-tempo football. I think we can do that with the Gigan Press, maybe. Develop young players. That's what I do. Sign players under the age of 23. I do that. Don't sign players over the age of 30. I don't do that. Um, and make the most of set pieces. Partizan said that as well. And... I guess we passed it, I didn't get sacked for it, and they've not questioned why I can't do that, so I guess we've done that. And then the Onga, Jesus Christ, there's so much stuff here, isn't there? Best youth country, best youth system in the country, uh, work with the wage budget, sell players to a profit, two year contracts, uh, most reputable team in Romania, apparently, and then challenge for the title, reach the knockout rounds of the Europa Conference League. Okay, well, I, it all seems acceptable to me, we'll say that. Brilliant. Uh, no expectations for this season, even though this... Has the season finished in Romania? Viterol. Schedule. Yeah, it has. So I don't know why it's on about, like, you won't meet expectations this season. Because the, the season's finished, lad. The season... Oh, I missed that question about something. I think I told us how much money we'd have, but I've I've missed that now. Uh, no request or anything like that. Okay. Interview done. I'm going to assume that every other interview is going to be pretty much the same, because they always are. So if we get some more coming up which hopefully we will do, I um, won't show them to you, but I'll just tell you how they went. But Viterol are asking me what backroom staff changes I want to make, which does suggest that they're going to be offering me a deal. Okay. Let's suggest these changes then, because we want to get rid of the assistant manager. Um, wait, what's this? Assistant, what? Hang on. What am I, what am I looking at here? Oh, Shitty Joe wants to come with us. Yes, let's bring Shitty Joe with us to be the assistant manager. And then, ah, oh, down here, we get rid of this guy. Get rid of him. Excellent. Okay, so Shitty Joe will come with us. We get, he's, I love this as well. He's the only player or only staff member. Every staff member doesn't want to go to Bitterall because of a low reputation or just doesn't, doesn't want to move. Where a Shitty Joe is like, yes, I'm coming with you. So we'll get rid of that assistant manager. Shitty Joe will come with us. It's within that sort of budget as well. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Okay, Shitty Jail's definitely coming with us if we go to Bitter Roll. And here they come, offering us the manager role. We've got a huge transfer budget and a much bigger wage, well, not quite. We've got an extra £50,000 a week to spend on wages. So for me, this is a very good job to go to. Very good job. However, we are still in the running for some other ones. Job Centre. Still applied for all these. We just haven't had anything back from them yet. 
so what I'm going to do is delay this, finish the episode, and then we'll see if these other clubs come back to me. If they do, we do the interviews and it'd be quite exciting. If they don't, we move to Vitterol as far as I'm concerned. But it's uh, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big moment. So of course, comment down below what you think. Uh, vote in the poll on Twitter, which would be quite exciting as to which club, ideally, if we got offered all of them, which one you'd want me to go to. And I'll read through all the comments and stuff and we'll find out tomorrow where we're going to go which is very exciting. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, drop a like on the video for me, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.